Well, g'day everyone, and welcome back to another David Maxwell Golf video, where tonight we are down at the T-Block, and I have a long-awaited video for you guys, the Garmin R10 up against GC Hawk. Now, this is gonna be the fairest and best way that I can do this test, just to see exactly how good is the Garmin R10. Is it accurate enough? Once you've got the right setting to be able to get accurate numbers, accurate spin readings, accurate ball flights, and be able to actually help your game. Tonight we're going to dive into that. We're going to put it up against this massive $50,000 setup here. So I think the unit itself is about $27,000 for the GC Hawk versus only $879 in the Garmin R10. So let's put it through its paces. I'm going to go pitching wedge. I'm going to go seven iron. I'm going to go driver. Let's see how close they go. I will say that I'm going to use Awesome Golf app with the Garmin R10 because I believe that it is the best app and gives you the most accurate numbers when using it. Obviously, the limitations are there with the Garmin golf app but either way I do have it set up on a stand I do have the RCT balls I do have enough room to the screen here I do have it six feet back six and a half feet back from there so we have plenty of room we're following all the guidelines it's set up perfectly let's see how we go let's go 118 meters to the flag which is about my pitching wedge number let's see how they go it's not a bad first strike a little bit right. Well, actually, they both got it right. I thought it was a good strike, but I've hit them both right. So to me, they're looking at pretty similar ball flights, except what do we look at here? Carry 117 versus 121.5 on Awesome Golf. That's a little further. Um, and backspin. So it's, it's giving me the backspin there on Foresight at 115 in total. Sorry, I'm probably in the way of it. Um, versus... The total which is rolled out to 128. Let's just check spin. Backspin there, 9,922 versus 9,907. Okay, that's so close. I'm so happy with that. It's within like, what's that, 15 RPMs. And we have what looks like a very similar ball flight. So let's go again. Okay, so I've hit that one a little straighter. I'm not going to say I hit that one as good. Maybe I hit it better. Okay, must have hit it better. 119, well that's pretty close, 119 versus 122. And again, they are literally both identical on their ball flights. Let's just see the spin rate. So launching at 28 on the Garmin versus 26.4. There's two degrees difference there, not that bad. Um, spin axis is left and we've got a left spin axis here, I'm sure as well. We can get into a bit more of the detail of that as we go through the numbers at the end. 9,031 versus 8,924, that is so close. Blocked it again, and we see a block. So I've hit two blocks, which are not that bad, and one that I actually had on the pin, and both units have read them identically. Uh, 118 versus 123 again. Ball speeds are a little different. Oh, no, not, not too bad. And we don't have the club speed on here because we don't have the dots. Last one with the pitching wedge, and then we're going to jump in to the 7 iron. Okay, that's a better line. Oh, it's a little pulley. I think it's a better line though. Yeah, it's a better line. Shot in progress. Okay, got that shot. So, sorry, I was a little bit dazed there while I was trying to look at this after looking at all these lights going around. 124 carry versus 118. So Awesome Golf is pretty much consistently giving us a further carry with the pitching wedge. I did kind of suspect that, to be honest with you, you know, numerous times with Awesome Golf using wedges. But then as you get to 7-iron, as you get to driver, the numbers get a lot closer. The spin is bang on. The ball speed is really close. 103.4 versus 105. And... We have two meters left offline, and we have a left curve of 0.6. So there's definitely both reading the same spin axis there, which is good. Let's add a club. All right, so now we've got seven iron. Let's go. Oh, didn't get it. But we do have, it's a pretty good shot actually in the end. It's a very similar flight path again, just a little, little blocky. And we have 157 meters of carry versus 155. That's pretty good. That's only two meters of difference. 6,063 backspin versus, what do we got here? 6,068, there is five RPMs of difference. That is so close. 121 ball speed versus 120.2. To be honest, I kind of thought that from here on in, it would be very, very close. Let's go. That's a better shot. 
That's a much better shot. All right, so nice draw there. And we see again, oh, we got a bit of a block. So that's the first little, all right, so that's the first little block there where it's actually given us a bit of a different reading. So quite clearly you can see that that's a left spin axis ball, definitely felt like that. And the Garmin R10 has given us a right spin axis. So that's interesting. The first one so far that's, I'm gonna say is a misread in terms of its ball flight, but in terms of its distance, we're only 1.8 meters off. 121 ball speed versus 120.1. I'm happy with that, other than obviously the ball flat. Let's go again. That's nice. Again, just that nice little draw. A little bit right side of the pin. Not gonna say I flushed it, but yeah, so we got a less spin axis on the Garmin R10 again. 152 carry versus 152 meters of carry. I mean, how close is that? Literally like in 0.1 of a meter, 118, 0.7 ball speed versus 119.2. And if we go to the spin axis here, uh, sorry, the spin, 6,341 versus 6,267. They are so, so close. Okay. Seem to like that right side. We see just a little bit of discrepancy there with the ball flight. I'm gonna say the spin axis is probably different as well. And the carry distances are, are really, really close. 156 on the Garmin versus 154 here on GC Hawk, okay? We will get into the average numbers, trust me. Definitely gonna be getting into that. Just wanna get these shots hit first. Let's go up to driver now. Driver, so we're in for it now. We've got the big dog. We're gonna see basically what everyone wants to see. I mean, let's be honest. Everyone wants to see the driver numbers. Everybody wants to know how accurate this thing is with driver on the Garmin R10. So, let's do that. Three or four drives with the Paradigm. Pretty much a dead straight ball flight. Actually hit that one pretty good. Little bit blocky again, but not too bad. What do we see? Okay, 259 carry on the Garmin R10 versus 275 meters of carry on GC Quad. Now we did see this with the Skytrack ST Plus if you've been following my channel. I don't have the dots on my club. I know that someone's gonna comment and say, well, why didn't you just get the dots to put them on? They're actually really hard to find and also very expensive. Plus I don't wanna just go and put reflective tape on there and then it, it does any damage in here. So yeah, but let's look at the static numbers outside of the carry numbers. So we've got 165.4 ball speed on the Garmin R10 versus 164.7. That is so close. Um, we got total distance of 281 versus 280 meters. So if you want to know your total distance with driver, the Garmin is literally within one meter of GC Hawk there. The ball flight looks very similar. Um, let's see, what have we got? Vertical launch at 14.2. I don't have all of those stats up here, but we will see that when we get into the actual numbers. And the spin 2,105 versus 1,999. Alrighty, so I did hit another drive, but as you can see, I kind of hit it actually off the planet so I have deleted it from the numbers it's just still going to be there on the screen but I don't want to really compare that okay so I've got the rights obviously so I hit that one right as well but at least we'll be able to compare the numbers still both of those look pretty similar in their ball flights and what do we got 263 carry versus 269 that's a lot closer 3200 spin versus 3237 it's five rpms of spin difference and the ball flights are also pretty similar that's more like it it's a little bit overdrawy but it's definitely a better hit than going right I can't stand that one that goes right and there's a bit of difference there as well it's giving me that low right one again which is interesting and strange at the same time um, 267 ball speed versus 170 277 meters of carry versus 267 287 total versus 298 okay and a very different spin axis let's go one more that was hit that was absolutely annihilated 280 meters of carry I don't know if that did that pick that one up oh I didn't pick it up okay Garmin didn't pick that one up I got that one a little high on the face. Ball flights look pretty similar. 
but it's a high, low spinning one. Look at that. Over 300 on quad, oh, sorry, on Hawk, and 268 meters of carry versus 285. 309 total versus 281. Same ball speed, 166. Had a very low backspin. I've got ball speed here, 167. And backspin of nearly 3,000. So it's got quite a difference there. Let's take a look at the numbers. So if we take a look at the numbers, they're gonna be up here on the screen. I'm gonna grab my iPad and stand over here. And we're gonna see exactly the difference between GC Hawk versus the Garmin R10. So pitching wedge, Club speed, we're not going to see that, but let's take a look at ball speed, 104 versus 102.4. Uh, launch angle, 26.7 on the vertical launch versus launch angle at 25.6. Side angle, I don't think we actually get that here if we do. Horizontal launch, right, 3.1 versus right, 2.1, so it's a degree difference there. Average backspin, 9,305 versus 9,314. I mean, that is so close. Um, and then if we look at... I don't, well, we don't have the side spin on here because it's not reading side spin. Um, but let's look at the carry distance. 122.9 versus uh, carry. Why doesn't it give me the carry? It's not giving me the carry distance here. It's saying 117 meters total. That's weird. Okay. Wonder why that is. Let's take a look at the numbers here. Maybe because on average it, it might be the same. But we've got basically, we've got a few meters of extra carry distance here on the R10 versus GC Hawk. So, jumping into the seven iron, uh, if we take a look at the seven iron here now, 90.4, again, we're not gonna be measuring the club speed. Ball speed, 121 versus 120.3. That's so close, I'm more than happy with that. Uh, jumping into carry distance, 156, we're gonna have to, again, just jot this down. 154, 154, 150.9, 153. So if we see the carry distance here, we've got 157, 157, 152, 156. So again, uh, awesome golf there is reading it around about that five meters further on average, or three to five meters further on average than what Hawk is, except when we get into driving. Now we saw this with the Skytrack Plus as well, and I do think, and I've got to be transparent, that some of the numbers on Foresight, when they're carrying without the dots on there, uh, especially that last one, I mean, 309 meters of carry. I don't think that I hit that drive that well, and it still said that it carried 280 meters, which is a long carry, but yeah. Anyway, drive up, swinging it pretty slow today, to be honest with you. 114, I did have that one there, which was quite slow, but average ball speed, 167. So let's look at the ball speed here, 167.3. I mean, it's literally 0.3 of a difference out, which is just so encouraging. I'm gonna ignore carry distance. I'm gonna to go to total distance, 281.9 total distance versus 280, uh, 281.9 versus 289 on Hawk, which is awesome. And if we go into the spin rates, I think there was really just that last one. So average backspin, 2,267 versus 2,560. But if I delete this last one, 2,432. To be honest, a lot of the numbers are there, thereabouts. A lot of the numbers are more than acceptable, but the tricky part for me is, are they 100% accurate? And I guess, as much as I love the Garmin R10, we do have to recognize that is an $879 unit that gets incredibly close. And I'm gonna say within five meters of carry on pretty much all of the clubs here, except for the driver. The driver being the longest club in the bag, obviously you're gonna have a bigger differential, but I think if I had the dots on there, it, it might be close enough. And I know people are gonna say, well, why don't you get the dots? I can't explain that already. Don't have them, okay? Um, but the Garmin R10 did a fantastic job. Now, some of the flight paths were off, but in terms of the static numbers, which are the numbers that it actually measures, ball speed, um, I could even say swing speed, I guess, backspin, because it's measuring that with the RCT ball. Either way, I think that it's done a fantastic job for the unit and the price bracket that it is. So just bear that in mind that when you put it up against the gold standard in golf, like GC Hawk, yeah, sure, there might be some differences, but the average golfer, are you gonna know how to hit a shot five meters different than the next shot? My guess and my answer is no. So I play off about three, I think it's like 2.9 or something like that, but my handicap, on, I'm just gonna say is three. And even still, I could flush a seven iron and I could flush a seven iron again, and there still might be that three to five meter discrepancy between my shots. Now, should there be? Well, the obvious answer is probably not, but I'm not a robot and I can't control that perfectly. The way I deliver the club, all of that sort of stuff. So is it accurate enough for what it is? Absolutely. I think it's done a fantastic job. Um, and kudos to Garmin. Kudos to Garmin for providing a unit that anyone can really afford, 879 bucks. So cheap. So get on it, guys. 
make sure that you uh, check it out. And if you do have any questions, throw them in the comments. I'll get back to every single comment in the comments section. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel because there's plenty more of this content coming. We've got the MLM2 Pro, which I'm going to do next. And then we also got some other exciting content with the Skytrack. So looking forward to that and I'll see you guys on those videos. Cheers. <laughs>